أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا أيها المسلمون إن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد أيها المسلمون اعلموا أن الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش الكريم We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that a servant should praise his master. We praise and we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has allowed us to be able to awake this morning as many have not awoken this morning. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we thank Him for the favor that He has bestowed upon us. One of the many favors which is the ability to breathe the air that He subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in perfect proportion and allow us to live and to sustain ourselves by utilizing this gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if it was not for this minute thing that we do not even think about, if the proportion of one gas that we breathe in was more than was required for us, we would have all ceased to exist. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the little favors that we view as being small and minuscule. But in reality, these are the things that keep us alive on a day-to-day -day basis. We send salam upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ballagha risala wa adda al-amana that he has fulfilled that trust, that amana that he has been given sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he has conferred to us that we should worship and obey and follow the teachings that have been ordained by one Allah. And the teachings that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us in a miracle in a book of guidance which is a miracle, the Qur'an al-Kareem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us closer to His book and closer to the way of life that we as Muslims are intended to live. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. As we were made aware a few minutes ago in the announcements, we have just witnessed and they are all but done. Ten of the most important days in the entire calendar. But that's now. Prior to this, we were in a season of its own. A season of blessings, a season of mercy, and a season of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has gone. This is the month of Ramadan and it seems as just last week we were in this month and it is gone. And a new season started. A season of Hajj, a season of blessings, a season of pilgrimage, a season of sacrifice and it is gone. 
Wallahi, as quickly as the time comes, the time goes. And if we have not taken advantage of what has gone, then know for a fact that you will not have that same opportunity to do whatever actions, good actions, you were capable of, you will never have that opportunity again. This is something that we need to be extremely mindful of. We need to be extremely cognizant of the fact that the days that we have, the time that we have, it goes very quickly. And that which we can do now, that which we can capitalize on now, we should do it now. Because once the moment is gone, by Allah, it will never return in the same way. It will never return in the same way. Bismillah ta'ala, I have for you today, each and every person in attendance and listening, I have for you the most lucrative business opportunity. Wallahi, it is the most lucrative business opportunity and it is in this khutbah. Insha'Allah, I will share with you this opportunity. And this business opportunity that we have, that I have to share with you, bi'ithnillah, it has to do with our time. It has to do with the seconds and the minutes and the hours that we have been blessed with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in Surah Al-Munafiqoon that, O oh you who believe, do not let your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. Do not let what you have now divert you from the remembrance and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when death comes to you, when death comes to us and we have realized at that point that we didn't do enough, then we're going to ask Allah, and this is not my words, this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the surah. Allah says that we will ask if we can go back, if we can return for a brief moment, that we become from amongst those people who give charity, that we become from amongst those people who believe and do good, and give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as we all can anticipate, as I've mentioned before, the time that we have now, it will never be regained. Because on that day when we ask at the time of death, when you ask if you can be returned, Allah will respond and say, there is no delay for a soul when its time has come. When your time has come, when that second is appointed that you will leave this earth, there is nothing, there is nothing that can Stop that from happening. And the one who has control of all things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us that what has been decreed by He Azza wa Jal with regards to our time of death, you won't get a second more than what has been ordained for you. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to us, in a very profound hadith that there are two blessings there are two blessings which many of us many of us lose and these two blessings one is our time and the other one is our health and wallahi if we had the if we had the time to go into this this could be a khutbah in itself 
how we lose our time and our health and how they coincide with each other. But for, the, but for this time that we have allotted, we will just mention this hadith. That two things that people lose and sometimes they lose it together. Sometimes it happens at the same time you lose your time and you lose your health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Qur'an about this topic. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He also reminds us in one of the ahadith. And one of the things about this, this surah that we're talking about and these, this ahadith that we're talking about, this hadith, is that they are both extremely famous. They are both extremely famous and I'm sure that everyone here has heard it before. Yet, we don't take the time to delve into the meanings of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us an entire surah devoted to the fact that we are at a loss when it comes to time. This is Surah Al-Asr. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also mentioned to us in a hadith regarding our time and taking advantage of our time. A hadith that we all know very well, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he advises us to take advantage of five things before another five things happen. So first let's talk about this Surah that we all know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes an oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something that He has created. And He says, Wal-Asr. By time. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, mankind is in a state of loss. The word khusr, linguistically, is many times in the Arabic language applied to business. When a business is in a state of loss, when you have lost your capital, when you have no profit, many times this word is used. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرُ Verily mankind is in a state of loss. We are in a total and complete state of loss. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us the solution. He tells us, Azza wa Jal, our problem. And then He gives us the solution to this problem. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by time, and He tells us that we are in a state of loss, it is not just for our enjoyment. It is so we can ponder these ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us at this point for our benefit to reflect on the passing of time. To reflect on the passing of time and reflect on the time that has already passed. And we know that the time that has passed, we can never regain. And reflect on the time that we waste. Doing what? Running after the wealth. Running after the beautification of the dunya. Running after the things that will not benefit us anywhere else. Except for in this life. Think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, Ya ayyuhal nas, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal nas, attaqu rab, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, Ittaqu rabbakum, Fear your Lord, Fear the one who has created you, Because a time is coming, A time when a certain event is coming, Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim, Indeed, a day is coming where there will be such a calamity. 
such a shaking of the earth that people, mothers will forget their children. Mankind will be in a state of sukara. They will be in a state, they will appear drunk. But in reality, they will not be drunk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us to utilize our time in such a way that we are preparing for this day. And do not think for a second that any one of us will be spared from this day. Because know that this is the day of judgment. This is what is leading to the day of judgment. And every single one of us will have to stand on that day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also mentioned to us in the hadith that take advantage of five things before another five things happen. This is also dealing with our time. He says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to take advantage of the youth. Take advantage of your age of youth before you become old. And no youth does not mean your teenage years, no. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised us that up to the age of 40 when a person is at their peak mental and physical ability, that is the age of youth. Up to that point is the age of youth, so take advantage of it in serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and serving his deen. Take advantage of the health that you have before you become sick. Wallahi, I, I think I can speak on behalf of at least some of the brothers that I see sitting on the chairs, that they wish that they could make sujood on the ground like they used to before. But that ability, their health has deteriorated and they are unable to do so. So take advantage, those of us who are sitting on the floor, take advantage of this moment before that time comes when you are unable to do this. Take advantage of the wealth that you have before it is taken, before poverty strikes, before you die. When we die, each and every one of us will die without a doubt. And I want to see one person who believes that when they die, and have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they die and stand in front of He Azza wa Jal for reckoning that they can use their assets in this world to bargain for Jannah, to bargain for freedom from the hellfire. And if you honestly believe that you can do this, then I beg and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and turn us towards that which is haqq and that which is truth. Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he mentions to us that wasting time is worse than dying. Wasting time is worse than death. Because when you die, you are separated from this dunya. But when you waste time, when you waste time, it separates you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it continues, take advantage of your free time. The free time that we have, take advantage of it before we become preoccupied. And take advantage of our life before death comes. While we are alive, while we are still breathing, we have the opportunity to rectify some misdeeds that we may have done. We have that opportunity. Because we can implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have the weapon of dua still. That we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. 
while we may not be able to go back to yesterday and do that good action that we had the opportunity to do but we didn't do we still have the opportunity to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for the misdeeds that we have done in the past. So in the beginning, I started off by saying that this was a lucrative business opportunity. Imagine for a second that there is a bank. There is a bank. And every day, each and every one of us has an account opened in this bank on a daily basis. And they give you an amount of money. Every day, the same amount of money. $86,400. They give you this money. And you have that day to use that money entirely. Because at the end of the day, midnight, it's gone. And the next day, you're given the same amount again. Will we leave the money in the bank for it to go away? Wallahi, I don't think anyone would do that. I don't think anyone would leave those thousands of dollars in the bank and not use it. If we cannot spend it in that day, we will take it out from the bank. Every penny. So we have it. And then the next day we would do the same and the next and the next. We have this bank. No, it's not my personal bank. But we have this bank. And it is the bank of our time. Every single day we are given 86,400 seconds. We are given this. And it carries, and it carries for that day alone. And when the day is complete, those seconds do not carry over. Your 24-hour day today, if you don't utilize some of the time, you won't have a 26-hour day tomorrow. It doesn't carry over. That which we have now, the precious moments that we have now, is for today only. And tomorrow is not guaranteed. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us in every single way possible to take advantage of this currency of time that we are given every day and utilize it to the best of our ability. So now some people might be thinking, how do I use this time? How can I use every single second in a manner pleasing to Allah? I have to work, I have to cook, I have to clean, I have to do this, I have to do that. I don't have time. Every single action that we do, if it is done with the correct intention, is an act of worship. Every good action that we do, Every action that is not disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act of worship. Take working for example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in many hadith that from amongst the best of people are those who go out and work and provide for their family. If you are working for the sake of Allah and for the sake of providing for your family, a halal means a halal way of life, a halal job, a halal income, then be idhnillah, all of the hours that you spend in doing this with that intention is time in ibadah. The time that we have to spend driving, cooking, cleaning, if the adhkar are on our tongues, then it is time spent in ibadah. It is time well spent. And we're still getting our daily actions done. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires each and every one of us to utilize every second of time in our day. 
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to prepare with our time, to invest with our time in a day that will come. A day that only the actions that we have performed, the time that we have spent getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a day that only those things will help us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us for our misdeeds, guide us and protect us, and allow us entrance into his jannah with an easy reckoning. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله قال سبح قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters I advise you finally that we utilize the advice that we have been given myself first and you that we utilize the advice that has been given to take advantage of that which has been granted to us. Every day, we have an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not waste this opportunity. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حياء عن أثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدنا الشباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغدهم فببغض أبغدهم وخير القرون قرن ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمنا ورحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله أذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر